I read somewhere, somewhere, someplace, where a homeless man was lit and burned just like that in the presence of people. The Bible says that men in the last days will be brutal. Despisers of good. Traitors. Lovers of pleasure. Rather than lovers of God. I'm here to tell you tonight but the words of Timothy, the words of Paul in Timothy, reads like your normal newspaper tonight. The words of Paul to Timothy sounds like, look like, feels like your ordinary television station or your social media page. There is no country, there is no community, there is no place that is safe to live here on earth. We go to bed tonight and sleep by faith. We wake up tomorrow morning by faith. We get ready to go to work and to send off our children to school by faith, expecting to come home and expect them to come home. But there is no guarantee that when we wake up tomorrow morning, we will be able to come back here tonight. There is no guarantee living in this desperate and sinful environment. Watch me. I pull this down off my WhatsApp. WhatsApp. And this person will remain anonymous. And I've redacted, cut out one or two things so that. You won't know where I'm talking about. But this person wrote me. Our brothers and sisters, redacted, redacted, have become battle worn. They have endured an awful lot. This is not Timothy. Somebody wrote this yesterday. Our brothers and sisters, bam, bam, have become battle-worn. They have endured an awful lot. They have no energy left to fight. He continued, the harsh re realities, bam, bam, have depleted their strength and water down their resolve. Many have lost the will, and I add the will to live. Many have lost the will to live tonight. Many young men, many young women, many older men, older women have decided that based on the, 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 the desperate situation that they're experiencing, based on what is happening on the world, in the world, in their community, in their homes, in their life, in their job, they have decided that they cannot take it anymore. And oh, but for the grace of God, some have remained sane. Does this description of a community, of a country, looks like, sound like, feels like the place where you live? Oh, my brothers and sisters, 
wherever you are, in your living room, in your church, in your bedroom, does this description of people and places where people live, is this an apt description of your community, of your country, of the place where you live? Oh, if you were able to watch television as I did, I saw with horror mothers cradling their babies, crying, leaving their husbands behind, leaving their husband to be slaughtered in a senseless war. Leaving their uh, young men, their, their sons behind to be slaughtered in a senseless war. The Bible says, in the last days, difficult times will come. Perilous times will come. Hazardous times will come. Hard times will come. Extreme times will come. Tonight we are experiencing extreme weather. Difficult people, reckless people, brutal people, desperate people living in, a, in desperate times. I was shocked, literally shocked, when I found out, you know, he gave me the figure, and I did not check it. The pastor Cottrell told me that there are over 400,000 Jamaicans who go to bed hungry in Jamaica every night and I thought I said okay maybe Pastor Cottrell was embellishing the thing what I mean making the figure look big so that he can have a big impact and then the head of state of the country that I'm a citizen in bringing greetings says the same thing in Jamaica, there are about 400,000 persons who go to bed hungry each night. In the world, 9.3 or 9.2, was 9.2, but 9.3 percent of the world's population go to bed hungry. People are running away from Jamaica. People are running away from America. People are streaming into the United States. People are streaming away from Europe because they are trying to find a safe haven here on earth where they can raise their family and enjoy life. But my Bible tells me that there is no place here on earth where we will experience peace and happiness in sin. So I ask myself, oh Jesus, is there hope? When will these desperate times end? How will they end? Is there hope for this messed, stop, broken up world and the millions of desperate, anxious, hopeless people here on earth tonight? Who should you turn to? Where should you go tonight for help, for answers, for solution to the perplexing and agonizing questions and concerns that you experience, that your children have to grapple with? Tonight, there are young men and young women, boys and girls, who are going back to colleges and universities, and they are desperate to find enough money to pay their tuition 
There are young men, young women graduating from college, having taken student loans, and there is no job but for the grace of God. Those young men and young women would go crazy, cannot find a job to take care of themselves. The question is, where can they go? Can they run to foreign? Can they go to another green pasture? Can I tell you, based on the word of God, there is no green pastures here on earth. There is no safe haven here on earth. But I have good news for you tonight. Mm. Mm. Jesus, in Matthew's gospel, Jesus, Jesus, and his disciples, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3, Jesus and the disciples were on the Mount of Olives. And the Bible says in verse 3, as he, Jesus, watch me now. You're wondering, you're concerned. Today, Pastor Johnston and I went to visit a member in the university hospital. And when we walked through Ward 3, we see all kinds of young and older men and women sick. A sense, a cloud, a sheet of darkness spreads over the hospital. Where can we go? Whom can we turn to? To find answers to pain to find solutions to diseases. For the scientists have failed. The Bible says that Jesus and his disciples, as they sat on the Mount of Olives, the Bible said, now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, oh Jesus, tell us. Mm -hmm. For prayer to this, Jesus was walking around the temple. And as Jesus walked around the temple, Jesus says, Hey, Peter, hey, John, hey, Andrew, you see these majestic columns. You see these beautiful edifices. The time is coming when not one stone is going to remain. All of this majestic temple that you, Peter, that you, John, that the people believe in, all of its grandeur will disintegrate into nothingness. Not one stone will remain. If your profession is that which motivates you, watch it. If the material things that you possess gives you full joy, watch it. When the disciples were concerned because they thought that Jesus was going to set up an earthly kingdom here, they did not recognize that life here on earth is transitory. Life here on earth is a journey. Life here on earth is just a passing through. For there is another country. There is another city. There is another place. A place better than this place. King of Stuart sing, no way no better than yard. But there is a better place than yard. The place that Jesus Christ has gone to prepare for the good and the blessed 